I'm Patrick, and if you want to know me better, click on this video in the description. Hello, everyone. I got a call from a customer wanting to know how to solder on a wire to these spindle connectors. This is what Chinese spindle connectors look like. This is a non-threaded type where when you put it into the spindle, you would turn this to lock it in. It has a little notch inside. However, this one is less common. These two I've seen mainly on 2.2 kilowatt spindles, and they generally come in this form when you receive the connector. These are both threaded type, and for both of them to remove this portion of the connector, so you'll be able to solder the conductors of a cable into this connector, you're just going to unscrew this portion here, and it will reveal the solder cups inside. That goes for this one as well, but you'll notice that this one has a little set screw that you may need to loosen to be able to start unscrewing this connector portion. And you'll notice that this one also has cups. There are going to be four cups for these connectors on each spindle. Three of them will be for the windings of the spindle. And one of them will be generally not connected, but um, sometimes the manufacturer of the spindle will tell you what the fourth pin is. So you need to follow those recommendations. Do not press the like button. I don't care about the like button. I don't want this channel to be about likes. But if you think my videos are something you'd like to keep watching, I do bare metal microcontroller videos, which means just my, the microcontroller itself, no passives or anything, and I show how building circuits from that and programming. I also do CNC electronics and router videos as well. And the soldering I'm going to do here is I'm only going to be soldering the three UVW, and I'm going to leave the fourth one unconnected. For those of you that have much more knowledge than me on the fourth pin, let me know in the comments what you think. I've seen recommendations on not connecting the fourth pin because of the grounding of the machine itself. Since the spindle is going to be in a metal clamped bracket or something like that, there's already grounding on the body of the spindle by virtue of the machine being grounded. I want to remind anybody watching that this video is about the soldering of a spindle connector and the way I do it. There could be many people that do it much better than I do. so make sure to watch other videos as well. And it's also not about the cable that I am using. I'm not going to be specifying what cable gauge or anything like that. Um, I'm using right now here a cable gauge of 18. I would go 18 or bigger gauge, but always consult the specifications of the spindle and the length of the cable to determine the gauge of your wire. I already know right now the internet is screaming at me for using 18 gauge wire. This connector comes with the spindle, and the spindle is rated at 10 amps or whatever it's rated at, probably like 11 amps. And the cups in the connector will only receive 18 gauge wire. So in that case, what do you do? If you have no other choice, keep the 18 gauge wire as short as possible and continue with a larger gauge wire. I want to hear comments from you what you think about the wire gauge in this situation. The first thing you need to do is put the cable through this portion of the connector. It already has the connector portion unscrewed, so I'm just going to put the cable through here so you don't make the mistake of reorienting this or making sure that these parts are not in the incorrect order. So I'm just going to put this all the way back so this part doesn't fall off the end. I'm just going to make a little knot like this. I'm not going to cinch it down. I'm only going to take a little bit off of the end. Since I'm not going to be using the black wire, I'm going to cut that short. But if you're not using it, you might want to just use a three conductor cable anyway. So, and I'm only going to take a little bit off of the ends. That's all you need. A lot of this insulation is going to burn off anyway with, and the flux is going to clean that portion. So you don't ha really have to worry about it. And because this is so short, the exposed portion, you don't need to use heat shrink either because when you put it in here, it's the insulation is already going to be really close to the cups. It doesn't really matter what combination you use because if the spindle turns in the wrong direction, all you're going to need to do is swap two of these at the other end where the VFD is. Because I only have two hands, I need to hold at least one of these in the cup while I'm soldering it. And I also need to hold the, the solder. I typically use something like this, a helping hand. And what I used to do is I used to hold it in the helping hand like this, and I would position the conductors very carefully into the cups and then bring down the helping hand until it provided some compressive force into the cups. But I don't do that anymore. It's a little bit harder to do, I think, uh, to get it right and, and make sure that the, the conductors are properly placed and kind of level, you know, like 
making sure that this part right here is, is at the same length as this part. So it's not like soldered in like this. So now I'm doing it like this. So I just put this inside of the helping hands. And then with the solder, I will pre-solder or tin the exposed part of the conductor. I'll also pre-solder the cup. And then with the soldering iron on the cup, making sure that the, the solder is melted inside the cup, I will insert it into the cup and then let the solder go. So let's go ahead and do that. Before soldering to these cups, you need to make sure you're soldering to the correct ones. And if I can get this in the sunlight, you should be able to see the numbers on the plastic. It may, you may need to get a magnifying glass and, and check that, but they're in there. It's very difficult to see. This one may be a little bit more clear because it doesn't have the housing around it. So you can see the numbers are they're clearly embossed on the plastic. So the top two are one, two, and then the bottom left is three. I just took a look with my magnifying glass and the top three cups are one, two, and three, and the bottom one does have a ground symbol on it. You can probably see it a little bit here. But like I said before, consult with the manufacturer before you uh, connect to that. I changed my mind. I'm not gonna solder onto this one. I'm gonna solder onto this one because these cups are smaller probably a little bit more difficult and these are really large so let me show you the worst case scenario so you can at least do that and this would be relatively easy so in this case I'm going to be inserting the cable here in the back there's nothing else inside except for this is loose you want to make sure that the threads are on this side this connector doesn't come with a strain relief on the back except for this clamping but this clamping may be too large of an opening for this cable. So you might wanna put something around the cable if your cable isn't large enough. You'll see that I'm using a used connector here. I don't wanna waste a perfectly good connector. So I'm gonna start there. So in this case, I'm gonna start at the bottom ones. I'll probably do the blue one first because that one looks like it's gonna be the hardest one to get in. And I'm gonna first tin it a little bit and then I'm gonna tin this. You also wanna make sure that this is as tight as possible because you want it to be able to fit inside of the cups. I'm waiting for it to kind of suck in. The more flux you give it, the better it'll suck in. And I'm gonna go ahead and tin these. All right, so you can see that the cups are pretty much full of solder. So now I can take my first conduit and I'm gonna to try to get as much surface I can with the, okay, that's pretty good. All right, so that's a pretty good connection. By the way, I have been soldering these things for probably about 16 years, but before that I was soldering when I was a kid and you want to make sure that you have good ventilation you can see there's a little bit sticking out here I can probably just snip that off but take your time with this this you don't want to be in a hurry and a larger tip would probably be better as well. Once you've gotten them all seated in, you can make some adjustments and you can also add more flux if you need to. This is the flux that I use here. Let's see if I can get it in frame. It's the chip quick NC191. All right, let's see if I can make this one a little bit better. When you put a lot of pressure on the housing or on the insulation, it's, it could damage the insulation, so be very careful with that. My hand is shaking. Because of the heat and um, the clamping down with the, the pliers can damage this, so just be really careful. You can see it would be almost impossible to get heat shrink in here, so it's, that would be a, generally not something you'd be able to do. 
because the heat shrink would shrink as you're soldering, so there's really no reason to do it. Now you're done with the soldering and you're satisfied with where you've put the conduits, you can go ahead and put it back together and you're just going to screw this outer body onto the connector. being really tight with this. So you can see that there's a little bit of space in there. I'll just take a little bit of tubing, like some silicone tubing, and then all you need to do is screw these clamping screws down.